Hey guys, Will Mason here in the Demo Lab, bringing you yet another video testing out the brand new Reverend Charger RA. I'm super stoked about this guitar. It's a great addition to Reverend's line, and it has some really cool features that are upgrades from some previous Charger models. And we're gonna talk all about that and tell you about all the different features and um, things that are on this guitar, and then I'm gonna play it so you can hear what it sounds like, because that's obviously very important. Uh, to begin with, the things the Charger has been around for a while. This body shape has been kind of a signature part of Reverend's lineup for quite a few years now. And there are a lot of features that um, have been available on only the higher end models like the King Bolt and the Jetstream that people have been requesting, hey, would you add that to the Charger? And so the Charger RA is the culmination of that. And so the two main features that have been brought into this guitar now are the dark roast neck, which is gorgeous, and the rail hammer pickups, which sound unbelievable. And we're going to talk more about those later on in the video, but that's kind of some cool new things that are different than just your regular Charger HB. Um, I'm going to walk through the standard stuff that is involved in all Reverend guitars, just in case you're not familiar with the brand. Um, I am a huge, huge fan of this company, and I think that they're doing a lot to bring value to these instruments. So to begin with, we're going to start at the neck, and we've got these pin locking tuners that make changing your strings super, super easy to get them on and off, and you don't have to mess with doing the knot and cutting them and doing all that sort of thing. Um, you still have to cut them, obviously. Uh, but the pin locking tuners are a great addition. Every Reverend, of course, is signed on the back of the headstock by the shop worker who is making sure that they are ready to go before they ship them to their dealers. And then on this model, we have the three tree string tree. So we're actually getting the G in there as well. It just helps with intonation and um, keeping the guitar in tune and stable. We have a bonite nut. This is a synthetic material that's actually more stable than actual bone and doesn't require killing animals. So that's great on two fronts. And then we have this neck that I mentioned earlier, the dark roast, which is gorgeous. Um, it looks like chocolate. I kind of want to lick it or take a bite out of it, but I'm going to restrain myself because after all, it is a guitar. We have the jumbo frets that I'm a big fan of. I know that's kind of a preference thing, but I think they're really comfortable to play on and bend on and just feel great. Uh, and I didn't mention this when I was talking about the neck. I need to explain why it's important. It doesn't just look cool, which it does look cool, but it also has a function. The roasting process pulls out some of the moisture and the sugar content out of the maple, and it makes it a much more stable product. So you're not going to be as susceptible to some of the problems that your standard maple neck is going to have with temperature and humidity changes, especially if you're touring, going on the road and traveling, you know, across the country and you're going from, um, you know, New York to Alabama, you're going to have a big change in uh, humidity and temperature. And with a regular maple neck, you may have some issues where the wood contracts and the razor frets start to be exposed. Um, with this, uh, roasted maple, you're going to have less of those issues. So it's a great feature to have for the pro musician out there. Um, as we connect to the body, we're going to have this bolt plate, which has six bolts. And most of your bolt-on guitars are going to just have four bolts. Those extra two bolts provide 50% of a stronger connection between the neck and the body. So it's going to improve your sustain, and it's also going to make a sturdier guitar. So if you're on the road again and you get crazy on stage, or if you're just a high school kid playing in your garage and you're getting crazy, uh, this guitar is going to be a lot sturdier in terms of the neck-to-body connection than your standard bolt-on neck. And of course, we have the laser etching with the Reverend logo, which looks super, super cool. Um, they just started doing that a couple years ago, and I love it. And if we flip it over to the top... Look at that. This thing is gorgeous. We have the transparent blue flame maple top on this particular model, which looks so, so good to me. Uh, Reverend draws a lot of inspiration, I think, from classic cars, and this is no exception. That color is very striking and um, really, really looks cool. Uh, and on the top that we have, it's going to have the bass roll-off knob, which we're going to get into a little bit more detail later on in terms of hearing what that does to the sound. But suffice it to say for now, 
that it pulls out some of the bass of the signal. So just like you have your tone knob that affects the treble, the bass roll-off knob is going to affect the bass, which seems like a very obvious thing, but very few other companies have anything similar to this. And Reverend has bass knobs on all of their regular production line models. The strings are going to be connected to the body on this tunematic bridge and stop tailpiece, uh, which is great for intonation. Um, certainly keeps the guitar in tune very well, has been my experience so far. And then, of course, we have a tone knob and a volume knob where you would expect them to be, as well as a three-way toggle switch that's going to go between your neck pickup and your bridge pickup. Speaking of the pickups, these things are awesome. So this is one of the biggest upgrades in the RA model that you can find. This is the rail hammer. The, in the bridge position, we have the hyper vintage rail hammer. And in the neck position, we have the Nuevo 90. Now these are designed by Joe Naylor, who is the founder of Reverend Guitars. And he has made it his business and his job to take vintage pickups and sonic signatures of pickups and improve upon them and make them even better than they were because we all kind of have this um, thing where we hearken back to the olden days of yore and say, oh man, nothing's ever going to sound as good as like a 59 Les Paul. Well, Joe Naylor disagrees. He says, you know what, I can take that pickup and make it even better. And so that's what he's done with these rail hammer pickups. I'm a huge fan. We're going to talk more about them once we start playing the instrument. The last thing I want to show you is the uh, input jack. So you can't see inside the input jack, but there is a pure tone uh, input jack that has two connection points instead of your standard one. Makes for a more secure connection. And then on the outside, what you can see is that there's four screws on the jack plate. And this again is another way that Reverend's made this guitar very durable. So over time, as you're sitting on your bed and sitting in your chair, if you don't have that 90 degree angle cable and you're just jamming your cable into the input jack, uh, this is gonna be a little bit sturdier and it's gonna wear out uh, it's going to take longer to wear that out. Uh, and of course, we have the laser etching with these little wings of Reverend logo on there. That just looks super cool. All the little details kind of come together to make this a really, really fantastic guitar. There's a couple things you can't see that are on the inside of the guitar that Reverend does, again, to just add to the value of the instrument and the quality. Um, inside these pots and the capacitors that they use in the wiring are plus or minus 10% variation. And I'm not an electric engineer at all, um, but what I do know is that these are gonna be more consistent from guitar to guitar. And so they have a higher standard for the parts that they're selecting. Instead of your typical guitar is gonna have plus or minus 20% variation. So from one capacitor to the next, they could be very, very different. Reverend has gone into the bay and said, hey, we want just the ones that are plus or minus 10%. So another way that they're bringing you value. With all that stuff put together, I think Reverend is making the best guitars on the market for the price. The value is definitely there. You're not just paying for the brand name at all. You're getting every penny's worth out of this guitar. So enough of me talking about the guitar. It's time to play and let you hear what it sounds like. For today, I'm going to be playing through this orange OR15 head and a PPC 112. This is just a 112 cabinet. It's a closed back. And... Um, we're actually going to be doing a demo on this next episode, so make sure you tune back in for that And uh, as we walk through more of the features of the amp. But for today, I'm going to start on some clean tones, and then we're going to get a little bit dirtier and walk through the different sounds that this guitar can make. And I'm going to have a whole lot of fun doing it because this guitar is awesome. All right, here we go. We're going to start on a clean setting and walk through what the different pickups sound like and also use the bass roll-off knob so you can get a feel for the variety of tones that you can get out of one instrument. Here we go. So you can definitely hear a range of tones just on the clean channel of the amp. Um, on that Nuevo 90, this thing is voiced like a P90 pickup, 
um, but there's some really cool things that Joe Naylor's put into the design. And you're gonna hear it a lot more when we get on the dirty side of this amp because the P90 is known for its very uh, um, identifiable tone, but it's also known for the hum that it brings into the signal because it's a single coil pickup. It's not the case on the Nuevo 90. The way that Joe's designed this pickup cancels all the hum, which is a really, really great feature, especially when you're on stage using high volume and high gain stuff. So uh, it definitely sounds like a P90. And then the hyper vintage rail hammer in the bridge is voiced like a PAF pickup, um, but it has a great upper mid range thing going on that's really, really cool. So I'm gonna do something with a little bit more strumming to it on the clean side before we get into a little bit more grit. So you can hear there's a pretty big difference when you go back and forth between that Nuevo 90 and the hyper vintage rail hammer in the bridge, which makes this guitar a workhorse. You can definitely get a ton of different sounds out of one instrument. And that's just on the clean sounds that you get out of the amp. So let's get into a little bit of grit and let's find a spot on the amp that just starts to break up a little bit. So that bridge pickup sounds awesome. And you can tell it has a little bit higher output than the other pickup. And so even on the same setting, I'm not touching anything on the amp. When I switch back to that bridge pickup, you can hear a little bit more growl and a little bit more um, pushing through the tubes on the amp and getting us a little bit more of that grit going on. Um, the other thing that I'm hearing on that bridge pickup is a really great upper mid range kind of chimey thing going on. Um, so I kind of want to explore that a little bit. So one of the things about the rail hammer pickups that's really cool is, and really the whole purpose of the rail hammer is it's combining two different pickup designs into one pickup. And so underneath the low E, the A, and the D string, you have these rail pickups. And these are great for having a tight low end. So you're not getting an overwhelmingly bassy um, low E, A, and D string signal kind of mixed in with everything else. Um, but then on the G, the B, and the high E, you have these oversized poles, which give you a really thick tone on those strings. And so when you're playing lead and you're playing up high, 
you can get some great sustain and just a, a really sweet and thick tone on those strings. Um, typically what you would have if you're playing, uh, you know, standard pickups is you're going to have one or the other. With a rail pickup, you're going to have that tight low end, but then you may have a thinner sounding high end. Um, so it kind of does one thing well, but not the other. And then with your other uh, pole pickups, you would have maybe a thick high end tone, but then your low strings are getting really woofy and muddying up the signal. Because of the way that Joe's put these together in one pickup, you don't have to make those concessions. You can get all those range of tones out of one guitar, which is really, really cool. And it especially shows when you're playing chords and you still maintain that clarity, even when we have some distortion on the amp. So it's a really, really great pickup design. So good job, Joe. Um, all right, let's add a little bit more grit to this thing and see what it sounds like as we get a little bit hairier. And this is a great time to point out this P90 with all this distortion on it is not giving us any hum through the amp. I mean, it's pretty quiet. Uh, so let's see what it sounds like. And this is a pretty, a pretty good amount of gain on the, the amp right now. So, wow. Okay, this thing is really, really awesome. Um, I am hearing all sorts of things going on uh, on these different pickups. On the hyper vintage in the bridge position, that chime is really starting to sing through the, uh, the gain that we're having on the amp. Um, but again, you can hear it on all six strings. You're not just getting this wall of mess. It's actually really clear. So let me play just an E chord straight up and you can hear it. Especially when I do an up at the end, like when I'd strum up on it. It really sings. It sounds great. On that Nuevo 90, it definitely sounds like a P90. It has a kind of trashy thing going on, which is great and what we love about P90s. Um, but again, you're not going to get the hum that you would typically have. So it's very, very usable um, in all sorts of settings, whether it's the studio or on stage. So very, very cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of this guitar, the Railhammer RA from Reverend. Uh, this is something that we are carrying in the store right now. We got our hands on it at Summer NAMM 2019 when we were up in Nashville with Ken and the team. And we had to bring it home to Birmingham and demo it for you guys and have it in the store for our customers to check it out. Uh, I am definitely loving this guitar. And as with most of the Reverends, I'm going to be sad to see it go, but I'm going to be happy for you, whoever buys it. Uh, this one in particular is actually for sale at the time of the filming of this episode. So be sure to click on the link that we have so that you can get it and take it home for yourself. We'll ship it out to you and, um, and let you get your hands on it and try it out. If you're in the Birmingham area, be sure to stop by any of our locations. We'd love to meet you and give you the chance to play one of these great instruments. It's always a different experience watching a video at home versus coming in and playing the instrument for yourself. Uh, so be sure to get by and say hello. We'd love to meet you. Be sure that you subscribe to our channel and like this post if you like it and leave me a comment below letting me know what you think about the guitar and also what would you like to see me demo next. We're always looking for new content to bring and it's one thing for me to come up with what I think is a good idea. It's another thing for you to tell me what you want to see. So this is all for you guys. We love uh, making these demos so that you can kind of make decisions on what you're going to add to your arsenal of guitars at home and on your tone quest that we are all on. Uh, figuring out what the next buy is. So with that being said, uh, really appreciate you watching this video. And until next time, rock on.